And so it's our job to figure out what is the area of the cross sections in terms of x, or maybe in terms of y, we'll see. If you can find a formula for that area, then all you need to do is integrate that area. Now we're not saying that volume is an integral of area. That's not it. What we're saying is that volume is a sum of volumes. This isn't just an area, there's another dimension here. And that other dimension is the thickness to it. And so the volume is the sum of the volumes as um, the number of them goes to infinity. All right, great. So with disk and washer, our job is to figure out what in the world this formula would be. Let's take a look at it. When you revolve a plane region about an axis, the cross sections are circular. Okay. And the solid generated is called a solid of rev revolution. Okay, if there's a gap, see, in this, in this particular drawing, the axis that we're rotating about is uh, denoted here with this arrow. We're rotated about the x-axis. This particular region that we're rotating is flush up against that axis. So when we go to revolve, there will, there will be no gap between the axis of rotation and the region. When we revolve, we'll have a solid disk. And we need a formula for that. The area of that cross section. It's critical to the formula. Remember the formula for volume is just to integrate from A to B the area of the cross section. Well it's just a circle. That's going to be pi r squared. Now if, the, if there is a gap though things will change. Here's an example. I have this, this region here and then my axis is all the way over here. I have this gap between my region and my axis. When I go to revolve, I don't get a solid disk like above. That's called the washer method. I like to think about the washer method is basically um, there's an outer disk, and from that you subtract some inner disk. And so I think of washer as a takeoff of disk. Okay, we have disk method, we have washer method, and um, we think of washer as uh, an outside disk minus an inside disk. Okay, let's take a closer look at each formula. So let's say we have a horizontal axis of rotation. Maybe not the x-axis. In this picture, it'll be the x-axis. This is a, um, I blew up the picture that we had on the other slide here. Okay, so as we were saying, I have an area here that I have to find. It's a circle. These cross sections are circular the area of this cross section will be pi r squared. I'm going to have to come up with a formula that will give me that radius though. It'll change for every problem. In this case it looks like the radius is just the distance up to the function. But if I can come up with the formula for the radius in terms of x, what happens is I take this, 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 um, this cylinder and move it from some small value of x to some large value of x It's and the integral then is in x and we have pi r, pi times the integral from some a to some b of that radius squared. That's how we're going to get the volume with disk method when the axis is horizontal. Okay, here's the axis here. I didn't label it. I'm rotating about the x-axis, horizontal axis of rotation. Then your your disk method will be in terms of x. But if you flip to have a vertical axis of rotation, here's an example. This one is the y-axis. If you flip to have a vertical axis of rotation, then it's going to be in terms of y. Your cross sections are still circular. You'll still get this solid disk, but the, the, the radius here is going to be a function of y. And then what happens is this, this uh, disk moves upward as you calculate the volume from some small value. And then eventually we get up to the top. There is some, we'll call it uh, C and, or no, still A and B. Okay, we call this A in this picture and then uh, this guy is B. But the integral is in terms of Y when you have a vertical axis of rotation. Okay, so this is this method where, okay, your job is to find this formula for the radius. 
Once you find it, you just integrate it. Not exactly it, you integrate the square of it. And don't forget about pi. So that's disk methods, pretty straightforward. And I and washer is just gonna be disk minus another disk. Let's flip the washer. Washer method. Say the axis is back to being horizontal. Okay. So I have this uh, this region here, and I want to rotate about this axis. Maybe it looks like the x-axis. That's fine. And so what's going to happen is because there is this gap between my axis and my region, when I go to revolve this, my cross sections will be washers. Okay. They'll be basically an inside disk that needs to be taken out from the outside disk. And so that's how the formula works. To figure out what these, you know, what the radius of each of these guys are, you're gonna have to draw, draw a line. And if you go from the axis and you go just up to your region, that's the inside radius. If you go from the axis and go all the way through your region, that's the outside radius. We have an outer radius and an inner radius. And so the outer radius is going to be used to get the outside disk's volume. And the inner radius is going to be used to get the inside disk's volume. But it's the same. You know, it's going to be pi r squared. But we're going to subtract off the pi r squared from the inside. So we put them in one integral. We don't have to, I mean, we don't have to say pi times a to b, the outside radius squared minus pi times a to b the inside radius squared. We don't have to do it that way. Why don't we just put it into one integral? And that's what this is. It's going to be our job though to get a formula for that radius for the outside, for that radius for the inside. And remember not to squ uh, not to subtract first. And we should square first and then subtract. That's when you're horizontal, you'll be in terms of x, when your axis is horizontal. But then when your axis flips and becomes vertical, then you'll be in terms of y. Back to that picture again where we have this region. And my axis, not, ne not, not, the, not the y axis, but another vertical line. Because there is this gap, we're going to have to find uh, washer. We have to use washer method where we have this disk here that's on the inside. We need the radius of that disk. We have an inside radius and an outside radius. And so what we have to do is draw a line that goes, that's what these things represent here. This line goes from the axis all the way up to the region. This represents the inside radius. This line goes from the axis all the way up through the region. This represents the outside radius. So we'll get an outside disk. We'll get an inside disk and we'll subtract. But it's going to be in terms of y though. This thing is going to move upward from some low point to some ending point. So we have to know, are we going to be in terms of x? Are we going to be in terms of y? Will we have disk versus will we have washer? Is there a gap or not? But we now have derived the formulas necessary to perform the calculations. Okay, great.